Hello everyone, my name is Jelani and welcome to my channel that is dedicated to helping you improve and succeed at CXC Math. Now in today's video, we're doing some CSEC Math Algebra and our main objective, if you look just below me, is to look at how we factorize using the distributive law. Now in the last video, we looked at how we expand using the distributive law. And really expansion and factorization are just opposites of each other. So this video is all about going in reverse. Now if you watched the first video, you might recall that we had a setup like this, where we had this a open brackets, x plus y close brackets, being converted into this form here, ax plus ay. And how we did that is we took this element on the outside of the brackets and we distributed it among the terms on the inside of the bracket. And we did that through multiplication. We said a multiplied by x gave us ax and a multiplied by positive y gave us positive ay. But consider for a moment, what if we didn't have, what if we didn't start off in that way? What if we started off in reverse with ax plus ay? And I wanted to get it in that form with the brackets. Well, what we would have to do there is we'll have to factorize. And how we factorize is actually pretty easy. The first question that we need to ask ourselves to be able to factorize is we need to ask ourselves what is common between the terms that we have in the expression. So looking at these two terms, what is common between them is A. So we say that A is a common factor. And we take A out and we open our first, our first bracket. Now we need to fill the inside of the bracket. And to do that, we ask ourselves a next very important question. We ask ourselves, what do I need to put inside of the bracket so that when I expand the bracket, I get what I started off with? Now, if I wanna get back ax, then I need to multiply a simply by x. If I want to get back positive ay, then I need to multiply a by positive y. And there you have it. We've successfully factorized this expression here. Let's take a look at a more practical example. So this one here, we have 2a minus 2 B. And we want to factorize this. Well, like I said, the first question we need to ask ourselves is what is common between the terms? So between 2A and 2B, what is common? Well, the answer to that is 2. 2 is common, so we say that 2 is the common factor. So we take two out and we open our brackets. And now we need to fill the brackets. And to do that, we ask ourselves the next important question. What do I need to put inside of these brackets so that when I expand this bracket, I get back what I started off with? Now, if I wanna get back 2a, then I need to just multiply this two simply by a and if i want to get back negative 2b remember we include the negative sign if i want to get back negative 2b then i need to multiply this 2 by negative b and there you have it we've successfully factorized this expression again let's look at a more ex more involved example so let's say I have something like this, 64 a squared 
minus it e. And I want to factorize this. Well, we ask ourselves the same question. What is common between the terms? So looking at our two terms, we ask ourselves what is common. Now, maybe you might want to pause the video and try to work it out for yourself. But if you're not interested in that and you just want to see the answer, then this is how it goes. What is actually common here? Well, the first one that might jump out to you is A. A is common because we have an A squared here and we have an A here. So A is a common factor. But we also have another common factor because 64 and 8. 8 is actually a factor of 64. 8 by 8 is 64. So 8 is also a common factor. So our entire common factor is the term 8a. And now we open our brackets and we need to fill our brackets. So we ask ourselves the next question. What do I need to put inside the bracket so that when I expand, I get what I started off with? Now, if I want to get back 64a squared, then I need to multiply 8a by another 8a because 8 by 8 is 64 and a by a is a squared. And if I want to get back negative 8a, well, we're already multiplying by 8a. So if I want to get negative 8a, I just need to multiply by negative 8 one and there you have it once again we've successfully factorized this expression so if you made it this far in the video first of all i just like to say thanks for sticking around and i really hope that you're able to learn something from it if you found the video if you found the video beneficial please be sure to give it a like and if you think that you could benefit more from videos that like this please be sure to subscribe to the channel Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.